Hello there, so uh, last week I did a teardown of the Behringer RD8 which um, we found was, um, was pretty good, it's quite quite well constructed really um, maybe not huge on serviceability but then um, modern equipment isn't really um, and with that in mind um, I've scored one of these and we're going to have a little teardown of this guy so um, this is bloody excellent this is the uh, Roland VT4 um, as I say it's great, versatile little thing um, loads of fun to be had with it I've had it for like a couple of days and I've had all sorts of uses for it um, so yeah we're just gonna compare it really to what we saw in last week's video so if you haven't seen that already um, go through uh, my videos and um, find that um, Behringer Teardown video oh by the way you may see there's lots of uh, old school valve guitar gear behind me. Um, if you're interested in that kind of thing, mention it in the comments because we can we can look at some of that stuff because I've done loads of things to that uh, and I'd like to show you if you're interested. Cheers. Okay, so here we go. Let's have a quick look at it. Figure out how it's constructed. So, uh, well, zoom out a little bit. Okay. So, oh, got a load of screws at the bottom. Uh, we've got a battery door. Oh, there's a screw in there, and we have a, a seam all the way around the top, which seems interesting. And we also have um, jacks protruding through the panel on this side, and also on this side, and switches. So this suggests to me that we can maybe pop the top off by undoing all these screws. Let's get into it and see what happens. Okay, so that's all the base screws undone. So we may find now we can pull the top off. And we do. Okay. So we've got some things mounted to the top mostly plastic parts, one metal shafted one um, oh, plastic pot there um, so we've got a ribbon cable holding the control surface to the board inside there's quite a lot going on in here so let's try and separate this ribbon cable In a nice way. Okay, that's where the ribbon connector connects. There that is. Okay, so let's focus on this portion first. So, surprisingly, quite haphazard looking construction. 
collection of tiny boards and little wires everywhere. Okay, so here's the um, control board. So um, the which pot is that? That's the key pot. So this is the one. This pot is metal shafted. Um, this pot is the one that uh, you use to choose your key for your sort of auto tune, auto pitch feature. That one. Um, it's on a little board on its own. Um, okay so we've got uh, the carbon capacitive switches and we have um, these faders that they look quite standard what sort of values are they they're not marked They just say uh, VR and numbers. So you'd have to see a circuit diagram to know the values that these faders are. These two are continuous and these two are centre detented. And they have through hole and these uh, pots are all through hole too. So, hmm. Now we'll turn our attention to the um, base, where the sort of sound chips are, so that you get a look at them. So yeah, Roland DS32, which I think you've seen a lot of Roland devices. Obviously this is made in China and um, this uh, has even less serviceability than the uh, Behringer, Behringer, sorry. So I would say overall um, Behringer's build quality is beaten Roland's. Um, anyway, there we go. Let's put the thing back together and I'll film all that as well. I wasn't really going to go too far with tearing this part of the machine down, um, but I just noticed something. This um, XLR combined uh, jack uh, mic input, there's something funny about this. It's a proprietary Roland part. Look at that. So if that were ever to fail, you wouldn't be able to replace it with an off-the-shelf part. Hmm. Let's try and get this bad boy hooked back up again. Right, 
so we had it apart. Um, now we've got it back together, so uh, got it plugged in, powered up, got our mic connected, so let's see if it still works. I am a robot. I will kill all of the humans. Well, I'd say I guess that still works. So awesome. Cheers.